welcome to this Dreamweaver tutorial. My name is Daniel Walter Scott and I'm a trainer here at Bring Your Own Laptop. Uh, this training course is for people new to Dreamweaver and new to web design in general. Okay, the topic for this course is going to be showing you how to produce images that will work in your website. So um, Dreamweaver does not produce images, it's a Think of it more as a construction tool. You put together all the elements. You might have typed out your content in Word. You might have made your images in something like Photoshop or Fireworks, and you put them together in Dreamweaver. Okay, so what we're going to do is look at Photoshop. Now, Photoshop is a really common tool to visualize websites. So I'll show you something I've been working on yesterday. This is a new photography course that um, we're looking to put together or um, amend our existing one and I'm just designing a new web page okay now this looks like a website but it's really not it's just a Photoshop file with lots of uh, layers so it looks like a website though what I can do in this is I can be very creative in Photoshop whereas Dreamweaver is really a production tool think of it like um, Photoshop being the architect and Dreamweaver being the uh, builder okay the builder doesn't side halfway through the building that he's going to add another floor it wouldn't work that way but in Photoshop, you can decide to move things around and adjust them quite easily. Okay, so what we're going to do in this one is um, I'm going to show you, once you have decided on your layout or you've decided what kind of visuals you're going to use, I'll show you the little practice one we'll use here. We've got a logo, we've got a button and an image. This text here will be produced in Dreamweaver, so I don't need to save that as an image. But these other ones here I need as little graphics to go into my website. Okay, so we've got a logo, we've got a little button, and we've got a bit of an image going on here. Now to save them out, we're going to use something called the Slice tool. Then we've got to decide what format they should go. Should they be GIFs? Should they be PNG? Should they be JPEGs? All right, so let's start with the Slice tool. Now, over here is my Slice tool. Okay, my Slice tool is actually hiding underneath the Crop tool. So hold the Crop tool down, Crop, 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 hold it down, then grab the Slice tool. Okay, and what the Slice tool will allow me to do is draw boxes around these little graphics. So I've drawn a box around there. It's pretty good at snapping to the edges. Drawing one around this one, this one as well. All right, so I've drawn little boxes around. You can see it's got these little blue um, dots, uh, blue boxes for the ones that I've drawn, and Photoshop's gone along and created all these other squares just to fill in the holes. Okay, so what I'd like to do now that I've drawn the boxes around these is go to File, Save for Web. Okay, and what this will do is it'll separate out those little images in their own separate files. So if I go to File, I don't want to use Save. Save will save out just a full um, a full image. I want to use a save for web because it uses special um, JPEG formats that are more useful on the web rather than your standard print JPEG. So we've got a file, save for web. Okay, and what we do in here is I can decide on which of these images okay, are best for which format. So we talked about before um, a GIF, a JPEG, and a PNG. Okay, so we're going to look at this button first. Okay, this button is nice and simple. Um, it has text in it, so maybe a GIF might be useful. It doesn't have many colors in there. There's a little gradient in the background, but not a lot. Okay, and you can, you can see over the side here that um, this little window here shows me my 256 colors. And you can see this greens and whites only actually occupies about 100 of these squares. So there's lots of color to get by. Whereas if I click on the image over here, you can see the color is maxed out, like there's no more space for it. So it's actually starting to clip some of the colors off. So for this button at the top here, it's perfect. Okay, so I've decided on a GIF. I don't have to worry about any of these things underneath like diffusion and selective anymore, okay? That used to be, it's a little bit old school. Leave it all as the defaults and you'll be fine. Okay, so GIF is perfect for this one. When I get down to this guy down the bottom, I know a GIF's not gonna work because there's just not enough colors. and it's, it'll be hard to see on the uh, video, unless you're watching it in HD, is you'll notice that um, through some of these parts is that the colors, um, there's not enough colors, so it ends up um, blocking a lot of colors together and it looks a little, uh, it doesn't look good in terms of quality. So, <clears throat> I'm gonna zoom back out. Um, you'll see the file size of this as well is 60 kilobytes, very big, okay? Images should be a very big image, a huge image is about 100 kilobytes. A small images are 10 or below. Okay, so you want to aim around the, you want to between the 10 and kind of 20 or 30 for, for a reasonable size image for this like uh, for this type of size of image. So don't go, um, yeah, if you've got anything above 100 kilobytes, that's far too big. Okay, but um, 
you're aiming around the 20 kilobyte mark. All right, so GIF's not going to work. If I go to JPEG, okay, the nice thing about the JPEG is you can see, um, even without playing with any of the settings, it's down to 29 kilobytes. And what we've got to play around with in JPEG is this lossy format, which pretty much just means I've got a quality slider. I can go up to 100 and I can get down to zero. And you'll notice on my um, um, image here, if you're looking at it on HD, is that when the quality is down at zero versus 100, okay, 100 looks perfect, zero looks terrible. Now, where the slider should be is totally up to you. Now, my range is between, I go no higher than 80 and no lower than 40, okay? I find that quality range is kind of the scope of where you need to be. Now, good quality images can go quite low in terms of quality and still look really good. If you've got a really um, bad image, it will look really bad really quickly as soon as you start lowering the quality. So it really depends on your image. It also depends on what this image um, is used for. If I'm a photographer selling my photography, I'm going to keep the quality quite high because I don't want there any chance of any sort of bad quality images going through. But in this case, this is a, um, uh, an image that just supplements a website. It's just a pretty graphic. It doesn't have a whole lot of, um, it's not an, an essential part of the website. So I know I can get the quality quite low and not worry too much about affecting the result of my website. So what I'm gonna do is, if I look at it down at zero, it's terrible, and what I'm gonna do is the limbo game. It's how low can you go? Now in this case, if I try my lowest, which is about 40, it's looking okay, but if I zoom in, I can start to see there's a bit of, they call interpolation around these bits. It's starting to get a bit grainy. Okay, so um, what I want it to be is probably about, in this case, I'm just dragging it up. For me, 60 feels like a good quality image still. Okay, and the file size is nice and small, 22. Okay, if I crank it up to 80, it jumps and almost doubles the size of the image. So. I'd like to keep it around 60, okay? But this will depend on the image and um, you know what you want from that image. So we're gonna do it at 60. So I've got this one, this button is a GIF, this is a JPEG, and we've got this one at the top here. And I'll, essentially it should, because it's just type and text and logos, it should be a GIF. But what I want for this one is I wanna do something slightly different. I want to have a transparent background behind it. At the moment it's got a white background, so I'm gonna click Done in Photoshop and in my layers, turn off my background image. And you can see this little checkerboard stuff appears. That means that it's transparent background. If I go back into File, Save for Web, what I'd like to do is this image here, okay, um, if I have as a GIF, GIF has um, a little bit of transparency. It's pretty poor. If I zoom right in, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, can you see around the edges here, there's no actual see-through parts because a GIF can only turn a pixel completely off so it's see-through, okay, or it's completely opaque, which has decided some of this gray stuff. And I'll show you the difference between a GIF and the lovely PNG. So we don't use PNG 8. PNG 8 is a bit of um, uh, an old version of it. Let's use PNG 24, or if you're using a different program, you can use PNG 32, whatever comes up as a setting. Okay, if I go to 32, let's watch the difference here. Can you see all the transparency starts appearing in between the buttons, uh, parts of the icon? Okay, so PNG 24 with transparency on will allow a transparent background. Yeah, JPEGs, let's watch JPEG. Sorry, that's a GIF, let's go JPEG. That has a full white background. It won't let you do anything other than white background. GIF has poor transparency and a lovely PNG 24 has full transparency. The trouble with it is it can be very big file size. In this case, it's tiny. It's only three kilobytes, so I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna zoom out. So I've got a PNG, I've got a GIF, and I've got a JPEG. Let's hit save, okay. and it's gonna ask me to name my files. So I'm gonna call mine h for home which is the brand of this one. I'm gonna stick them on my desktop, okay. and I've got the options in here. Images only, perfect. Where it says all slices, remember earlier on, uh, we dragged out three separate slices. But what happens is Photoshop goes and fills in all the gaps with other slices. I just want my user slices. Okay, so they're only gonna give me the three that I did. Otherwise, I'm gonna have a pile of um, different slices that I don't need. So I hit save, and I'll jump to my desktop. Okay, and you'll see I've got an images folder that's put there, and I've got the three files, so PNG, GIF, and a JPEG. 
Now you can rename them if you like. I'll just show you here. Here's my PNG with a lovely transparent background. There's the GIF and there's my JPEG. Now what I'd do is I'd copy them and put them in my site file. So earlier in the tutorials, we looked at uh, creating a site. So we went to desktop and we created a site called example tutorial and there was an images folder. So I'm going to paste them in there. And then I can use them for my website. All right, so that's how to use Photoshop and its slice function to slice out different images in their different formats. All right, let's move on to the next tutorial.